Each sow wears her own electronic collar to enable her to be fed a specific daily quantity and ensure she doesn't eat her companion's food. The sows have no difficulty in quickly learning how to operate this feed station in which a computer recognizes each collar, dispensing food accordingly. The animals can even learn to outsmart the computer, given half a chance. Those happening to find spare collars have been discovered regularly carrying them to the food dispenser to get a second helping. In behavior patterns like this, animals have learned to link stimuli with events which will affect them directly. But not every type of learning can be explained by such links. Here, lambs are engaged in observational learning in which an animal learns from another animal's experience. See how the milk-fed lamb explores his mother's concentrated food. Later in life, he will only accept it himself by recalling this early learning. Australian farmers shipping live lambs on long journeys to slaughter find those lacking this learning experience will starve to death rather than eat concentrates. The mental ability required for observational learning is more sophisticated than that employed in gaining immediate rewards, yet, like you, these hens are learning by watching a video. The hen in the video eats food from a red container. So let's see what happens when we offer them food hidden under sawdust in similar containers, some red, but others yellow. The first hen immediately goes to a red dish. The second glances at a yellow dish, recalls what she's learned from the video, then she too chooses the red. Scientific tests show the hens using their brains to make this choice over and over again. Brain power is of little use without muscle power to translate thought into action. Muscles are effectors which finally add response to the chain of events which began with a stimulus. This cow, sensing flies, deals with them with a modicum of muscle power, like this. But in response to more serious threats, internal effectors also affect movement, preparing the body for fight or flight. A heartbeat monitor strapped to this calf allows us to hear its internal response to alarm at the sight of a dog. Listen to the quickening beat of the heart, pumping out blood to prime other muscle tissues. At the same time, a second internal effector, the adrenal gland, sends natural chemical stimulants surging into the blood. Together, they boost the body's capacity to react to stress with efficiency and speed. However, internal responses to prolonged or severe stress can threaten the health of both animals and humans. In barren rearing systems like this, widely used in pork and bacon production, piglets have no straw or other stimuli. They live on metal slats, bounded by concrete walls, and respond by biting and chewing each other's bodies and fighting, having nothing else to do, nothing to explore. Surveys reveal children to be more likely to catch colds during exam periods at school, a mild result of increased stress. But for these piglets, every day is a severe test, a test of endurance. The weakest animals suffer most, and such chronic stress can result in diarrhea, illness, and stunted growth. These piglets of the same breed are among the few now reared free range in an environment providing ample stimuli to which they can respond. See the difference environment makes to their behavior. Even the runt, little more than half the size of some of his siblings, 
plays and thrives free from stress and bullying. Studies reveal that rough handling by humans can also stunt animals' growth and result in this kind of fearful response. But these timid piglets have not been roughly treated by humans. The environment an animal is given and the extent to which it satisfies its behavioural needs will also strongly influence its response to humans as well as to penmates. These piglets have been treated in the same way by humans, but given these playthings. See the difference in their behaviour. Their friendly response and lack of fear result entirely from the fact that, unlike the others, they've been given the means to help satisfy their strong exploratory needs. In systems like this, still used in many countries, Animals respond to near total lack of stimuli with abnormal repeated behaviours called stereotypies. See how this sow repeatedly mouths the bar. Another typical stereotype behaviour is moving the head from side to side. Such responses may indicate that animals are withdrawing into a world of their own, becoming less aware perhaps of their unacceptable but inescapable environment. Now released from her equally barren cage, this hen eagerly steps into a nest, a luxury she's never known before. But is it a luxury or a need? Animals can tell us what they really need by showing they're prepared to pay a price for it, as they did in our obstacle course. In scientific tests, Hens prove willing to pay a very high price for a nest, passing many unpleasant obstacles to convince scientists that this is, indeed, a compelling need. But this hen now has a nest, already comfortably arranged by one of her companions. So why is she picking up straw to remake it? Because, as studies show, animals also need to be actively involved in providing for their own requirements. Given the choice, for instance, of food that's easily available or the opportunity to forage for it, they frequently choose to forage. By showing how they can respond to stimuli, animals have taught us that they are not automatons, unintelligent, machine-like creatures. They've demonstrated their frustration when denied any opportunity to respond to inner stimuli which still drive them. They've shown the remarkable capacities of their receptors to detect stimuli. While sometimes responding to simple events with rapid automatic reflexes, they've revealed how most of their behavior results from a more complicated chain of events between stimulus and response. This involves learning, remembering, predicting, and even conscious decision-making. By following this chain of events, we've begun to solve the mystery of what goes on inside the minds of the animals, and what they need to use their full capacities and live contentedly in a stimulating world. <laughs>